Barbie mania sweeping the nation. My son asked me, hey, dad, I got a Barbie day at work next week. Can you do me a favor? Can you print me up a shirt? I'm like, yeah, why not? So I'm going to show you this time around that you too, not only, you don't have to print a Barbie shirt. I happen to do this one for him. I'll show you how to grab an image, convert it over to something like an Arnon. And you're going to need a couple different programs. You're going to need paint. I use Paint 3D. You can use whatever you want. It just happens to be preloaded in Windows. I use Fusion 360 and a slicer program. And that's all you need to do this. All right, so let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back to the corner. It's me, Jeff. This time around, Barbie Mania. Son asked me to make a shirt. These are a lot of the shirts that you kind of see. I'm basically just gonna show you how to um, grab a logo or whatever and convert it over. Now, I'm not looking to steal anybody's intellectual property. I'm not looking to infringe on anything. I'm kind of looking at this little design, I am Knuff. And I'm going to grab one of these random logos here. Uh, I'm going to try not to show you who I'm taking it from or anything because I don't. The whole point is you're not stealing intellectual property. So not to get anybody upset with me or anything. But basically all I'm doing is I'm going to take this logo here. I'm going to grab my snipping tool off of Windows. I'm just going to cut it out. And I'm just going to save that. I don't want to show the whole website that I'm getting this off of or anything. Um, again, because as I said, I'm not trying to steal anybody's property or anything. I'm just trying to run a tutorial here. That's it. Once you have whatever logo that you want, you're going to go, I use Paint 3D because it comes preloaded in Windows. Basically, just find the logo that you want, import it in as I have it right here. And what we're going to go to is we're going to go Magic Select. You're going to bring this in. Get it a bit closer. If you have a whole bunch of stuff in the background, this really works well. You don't really need to do this that much with this one because I got the white background. But just for sake of argument, that's what I'm going to do. Click Next. Um, and then as you can see, I just have the bottom half of this done. That's okay. We'll grab that in a second. So what you want to do here is if you're missing little bits of your logo, you can simply go over and click the Add and then click on it. And you see, it, well give you that part so once you've done that and you're happy with it and i'm happy with this you're going to click next again and that's going to pull that away you see how that's going to separate all that so basically what we're going to do at this point in time we're going to do the exact same thing again with the magic select i'm going to take the other half of the logo so you can kind of break it down into different sections this is the section i'm going to work on now same steps you're going to click next now you see how I'm missing the little bit to the A and that whole outside rim on the I. So all you have to do is just click that and that will make that pop out and bring it up. So now we're just going to click next again. And now we'll have both parts. So see here's the I am. I'm going to go back down, grab the other half of the logo, bring it up, get it centered to how I want it. You see how I still have a little bit of that background there? That's the canvas. So we're just going to remove that by moving these two sliders around. Now I should have my entire logo. I can adjust it to how I see fit. Once I got it kind of where I want it to, all I'm going to do at this point in time, I'm going to go up to my menu button and we're going to save it. In the menu, save it as an image. Okay, you don't want to save it as a 3D file yet. Save it as an image, save it as a PNG, okay? And just click save and save it however you want. Once we're done saving it, one more step to go. What we're gonna do is we're gonna convert this into a vector file. And the vector is gonna save it as an SVG, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I go to vectorizer, if you Google or search, you'll find a whole bunch of image to vector files like I did right here. It's pretty straightforward and easy. As I say, I use Vectorizer. It works for me. All you're going to do is you're going to upload your image, find wherever it is you saved. It's going to load it in and it will provide you with a preview. Now you notice on the preview, there's a black background. 
you can take care of that really quickly. You just have to go down to choose output options. And you're just going to click on that black circle there. And that's going to remove that black. See how it puts an X in it? It's going to refresh, and there you are. So then you actually have just your pure logo. That's it. Now the difference between a regular file and a vector file, you see if you zoom in, you see how much smoother the vector is than just the image file? So that's going to look really a lot better when you go to print it. So what we're going to do is, we're, as I said, we're just going to save this. You're going to download it and save it. If it was a higher res picture, it would be even better still. This one's still a little rough, but it will work for our purpose. Now let's have a look at that SVG file that we converted from the vector uh, into our slicer. So I'm using Bamboo Slicer here. I'm going to pull it in. Let's load up. And as you can see, it comes out as the vector, as an SVG. And that's just perfect the way it is. It comes out 10 mils high. Now I found that with Bamboo Slicer, it's got a bit of a bug in it where you manually have to adjust the height. You can't just type the height in or else it will do this weird thing. I'll show you that right now. So if I go and change the height of the Z into a 0.2, which I would use for an iron on, it does this weird thing. So it kind of disappears, right? So let me bring that back for a second. And there it is. Oh, hang on. So there you go, that's at 10 mils. So if you actually drop it down manually to the height that you want, you'll get a better result. So when you open up Fusion 360, you're gonna be greeted with all of these buttons and stuff like that. We only need a couple of these. That's all we're gonna do. As a matter of fact, it's so simple and easy. All you're gonna do is hit insert, and you're gonna go insert an SVG. And click on that, and find in your computer, find the file that you saved, the SVG file. Now, you see these three little things here? Think of these as like your X, Y, and Z on your printer. You're just gonna lay it right down on your bed. So you're just gonna click on your bed right here, just like that, and you're gonna lay it right down. Now, you see these little icons here? You can kind of see your design over here in the corner. We're gonna pull that out closer to the middle so we can play around with it. So click on that square and just drag it up. You see that little bracket there with the two small arrows? If you click on that, you'll be able to resize, make it bigger or smaller. Just get it right around center so you can kind of work with it, okay? Once you're done that, all you're gonna do is click okay there and okay there. So finish sketch and okay. So here are my words right here. As you can see, I am Knuff. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take the outline of the I and the am and just take the letters for Knuff. So what you want to do to do this is you're basically going to, you see here how it turns all black, but if you follow the, um, the line here, you get that little circle that kind of follows you around. You don't want that. You want it to be all black and you're going to click your mouse button. Okay, now you're gonna hit your control button and click your mouse button to group them. So each one that you wanna grab, hold down that control button and just add another body to it, okay? So N, O, U, G, and H. So that's control and you're gonna right click or left click button, okay? So that's easy, super easy. This is my design. This is what I want to do. Now you're going to click on this button here that says extrude, okay? And all you're going to do is you're going to extrude it about 0 0.2 mils because we're just making it into an iron-on. So type in 0 0.2 there. Make sure you're on new body and hit OK. Once you do that, it'll turn gray. Once it turns gray, now you see the little um, square in the top corner there? That kind of, you can kind of, you can click on that and you can just kind of move around your design a little bit. Now if you zoom in and zoom out with the mouse wheel, you can see there's a bit of body there. It's got a little bit of height. So that's it. That's your design. That's what I'm going to use for the iron-on. That was like four clicks. Super easy. So all we're going to do 
to get this out and to print it. You see where bodies is here? You can open that up. Same with the control key. You're going to hit control and you're going to click on all of these bodies and you'll see them highlighted as you click on each one of them. So that's adding all your bodies into the design. You're simply going to go to the tab here for file. You're going to export it. You're going to call it whatever you want. And I'm going to export this as a 3MF file. You can also export it as an STL if you wish. 3MFs work with Bamboo Slicer, and that's the slicer I'm going to be using. So I'm just going to click OK and Save. You'll see at the top corner it's been successful. That's it, man. That's all there is to it. We're going to now take this into our slicer. Here I am with Bamboo Slicer. I'm going to import this. It says multiple parts. So that's good. It's going to come in like this. It's looking pretty good. I do need to lay it flat though. And I do need to lay it upside down and backwards. So while I'm playing around with this, let's touch on a few things. Like um, we need to figure out what filament we're going to print this in. So the best way to do this is typically you want to print with TPU. That way it's flexible. And when you go to iron it on, it adheres really well to the fabrics of the shirt and it gives you a bit of flex. I unfortunately do not have any dry TPU right now. So I'm going to use PLA. PLA should work just fine for something like this because the letters are small enough that you should be able to have flex with the shirt and stuff. So let's talk a little bit about build plate prep. Now what you see here, I'm using parchment paper on the build plate and I'm also using uh, a glue stick. This is the Bamboo Labs glue stick. I actually found this to be a little too sticky for my application. You'll also notice I put some tape around the edges. I found out after I printed or started printing that the tape actually released with the heat. So I ended up using some small magnets just like this. The magnets seemed to work really well. I could kind of stretch out the paper because as it got hotter, you would notice that the paper itself would kind of pucker a little bit. So by using the magnets, you were able to solidify a side and then flatten it out and then put the magnets down on the other side making it a bit taut so you can print on it really good so yeah parchment paper not wax paper or anything like that with wax paper not gonna work now for the printing let's have a <laughs> for the finished product you're going to take your parchment paper flip it over I'm using the piece of yellow tape up top there just to kind of align it straight I had my son put the shirt on I put a piece of tape across his chest where we wanted the iron on took the shirt off and line it up carefully once I'm happy with its position I'm gonna end up grabbing an iron and I bump the camera as I do that sorry for that sorry for the shaking and you're just going to iron this. You want your iron to be on as high heat as possible. So it's able to uh, melt the plastic into the shirt fabrics. And you're going to want to go over it with a couple of passes. And this is kind of where my problem lied with using the Bamboo Lab glue stick. It was a little too sticky. So when I went to go check it, it kind of held a little bit too much. And I just basically wanted to see if it had soaked into the fabric or not. So I found that it did soak into the fabric, but I had a little bit of work with that glue stick because it kind of stuck quite a lot to the letters. 
what I ended up having to do after I got most of the parchment paper off was I just grabbed a wet paper towel and I kind of went over the letters. You see here I'm having a hard time getting that parchment off. But yeah, I went over the letters with a wet paper towel just like this and kind of cleaned up any remnants of glue and any remnants of the uh, parchment paper that was stuck there. And there you go. Looks pretty good if I don't say so myself. Not bad for a first try. Here's my son wearing the shirt. Says it looks really good. He'll be very happy on Barbie night. Yeah, so that was fun. So we got this here. That's pretty cool, right? My son was very happy. You saw him sort of modeling the shirt. Thought that was awesome. Um, I do wish if I were to redo it again, maybe a brighter white, maybe a couple layers to really make it pop. But overall, I think it gets the message across. It kind of looks like a vintage t-shirt because it's a bit faded. I think that's really cool. Had I to do this again, I would use TPU. I use PLA for this. But yeah, in the tutorial, you learned how to find a logo, copy a logo, bring it into Paint 3D, separate the logo into the pieces. Then we brought those pieces into Fusion, turned them into bodies. We extruded them. Then we took that file, be it a 3MF or an STL, and we printed it onto a piece of parchment paper. Backwards, we flipped it over and we used an iron to do the iron on design. So. Corporate logos, one-offs, you're going to a movie premiere or something. Um, you're going on a family vacation for a couple days. Lots of different applications for this. If you have any comments or suggestions about this technique, leave them down below. I want to thank everybody who's watching the video to the end. That's great. That really works well for me for the analytics. If you're cruising through the channel, do me a favor. Hit the subscribe if this has interested you at all. Uh, give me a thumbs up, a like, whatever. And again, thanks so much. And Barbie shirts.